In part A of the question, points A and B are located diametrically opposite each other, and our goal is to find the difference in the electric potential at location A and the electric potential at location B. Now these electric potentials are being set up or produced by a point charge, which we have labeled Q. And so we need to know the equation that gives us the electric potential as the result of a point charge Q. Well, that is this equation right here. So for example, if we were going to use that equation to determine the electric potential at point A, we would say one over four pi epsilon, and all of that is a constant as we will see, multiplied by the charge Q, and then divided by the distance from the point charge to location A. Well, we can see that that distance is indicated by D1. So we can actually substitute D1 in for that distance. Now the same thing would be true for VB. We could write VB is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught multiplied by the charge and then divided by the distance from that charge to location B. We can see from the diagram that that distance is symbolized by D2. So that is how we could use the equation for the electric potential as a result of a point charge for each of those two locations. But again, in part A, we need to find the difference between them. So we need to find, in other words, V sub A minus V sub B. So what we're going to do is simply subtract them. We can say that VA minus VB will equal, okay, so this expression is for VA. And it might be quicker if we simply copy and pasted it rather than rewrite it. So there is the expression for VA, and then we're going to subtract the expression for VB, which is this one right here. And there we have it. Now we could substitute in the values to get the answer right now, but it might be more helpful to do a little factoring here, make the calculation a little bit simpler. Now if you look carefully, you've got two terms, this term right here and this term right here, and what they have in common is this factor of one over four pi epsilon, and they also have in common the charge Q. So because they have that common factor, we can actually factor that out. So it would look like this. We would have, well, let's see, you're gonna have one times Q, which is just Q, of course. So it would be Q over four pi epsilon, and then multiplied by, now when you factor this out, be careful, because you take the Q out, but that does still leave a one in the numerator. So it would be one over D1, and then minus one over D2. So that would be the most attractive version of the VA minus VB. We can now substitute in the known values. Remember, Q was given in the question as one microcoulomb, but let us be careful there because one microcoulomb needs to be converted into coulombs. We would have one times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs. So that would be the correct conversion to go from microcoulombs into coulombs. And then you're going to divide this by four pi and then epsilon, as we said, is a constant. It's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And it's got some funky unit that we're going to omit for now for clarity. And then over here, we have one over D1. If we scroll back up to the given information, we were told that D1 equals two meters and also D2 is one meter. So let's keep those values in mind. So D1 would be the two meters and then D2 would be the one meter. And now if we punch this carefully into our calculators, we're going to get negative 4,495. This would serve as the correct answer to the difference in the electric potential between points A and B. And because this is a difference in electric potential, the unit would simply be volts, the standard unit of electric potential. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. Now in part B, which we can see over here, though we might want to slide it down, the locations have been reconfigured. So they're no longer diametrically opposite one another. They're situated as shown in the diagram. And we would still find the electric potential difference VA minus VB in the same manner. So we would still have VA minus VB equals the charge over the constant times one over D1 minus D2. 
Now what's interesting here is that these values for D1 and D2 haven't changed. In other words, D1 is still two meters and D2 is still one meter. So because those values haven't changed, nor has the charge changed, we don't even have to really recalculate this because it's going to be the same answer. It's negative 4,495 volts. So this would be the correct answer to part B as well.